Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of having to settle for mediocre are over. Welcome to Project Relationship. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Join me as I explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton, and I'm here with my partner, Ken Hamilton. Here I am. And we're talking this week about money and <laughs> money so when pe- when when people ask why i talk about sex for a living because i'm a sex educator and um i do research in the areas of sexuality um i say it's because it doesn't make me uncomfortable it i feel comfortable in that realm but money yeah that's tougher it is that's taboo <laughs> it's it that taboo gets to me and my yeah. complexes a little bit quicker however um i do like to talk about the untalkaboutable. You do like everything that is talkaboutable. And you you have your discomfort with money and I have mine and together. It it's makes quite a mess. It's a challenge. So the holidays also bring up a lot of issues around money because a lot of us celebrate the holidays by giving gifts, decorating, throwing parties, having fancy meals, buying all the cheese. All oh, yes. the cheese. Yes. I mean... I cannot believe what a person can spend on cheese at the holidays. Like you're standing in the store and you're like, yep. I need more cheese. And beaver cheese. Yes. yes. So all the cheese, the, um, the need to make the holiday special invites the spending of money. Yep. And we've, we've struggled with money. And one of the language, one of the things that we added to our toolbox around this was the idea of complexes. So Jung's yeah. idea of complexes is, is rooted in the idea that we simply have an unconscious. We have pieces of ourselves we are not aware of. We act them out and that a complex develops around like a sort of like a sticky spot in your psyche. Um, and it collects energy about particular topics, particular stories, um, the habits that you see acted out in your family of origin the complex builds its sort of own autonomous being. And so you go to try to do something and the complex comes up and kind of knocks you off course. And it acts like of its own volition almost. So you can find yourself caught in a complex or notice a complex when you say to yourself, my God, that's not like me, but there you are. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like who else is in there? So I find that particular language helpful. Um, Another language we can use is, you know, like parts theory where we think about, so there's this part of me that acts one way. And then there's this other other part of me that thinks that that's absolutely ridiculous and I shouldn't do that. Um, However you want to talk about it. When you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to make money and your money feels very tied to like validation of self because money (laughs) is how we exchange energy and how we how we kind of have one of the measures of success yeah how we measure our success right so yeah money can be all tangled up in us and when we were first together we divided up all of our tasks along what we thought were not gender specific roles or anything but in fact the money question was it was interesting, right? Because we it's like we divided up the the jobs, the the roles and, and rules of things in our house. And it went without saying that you would handle yeah, the money. It just Even so- though we were running a business together, yeah. purportedly. Um, and then we were running a household together. Yeah. And <sighs> and there was something about that decision that made sense at the time. Looking at it now, having me in charge of the finances, it doesn't make any sense. Right. But that took a long time to discover. And a lot of lost money. A lot. And when I say lost, I mean um, a lack of understanding where it was actually going. So you and I came to each other um, from previous relationships and with with their own money habits and all of that. And I had always handled the money 
um, or almost always in my first marriage. Um, I'd ha handled my parents' finances from the time I was um, 18, 19. And I understood how to manage finances. But for some reason, when we got together, and I think I know what the reason was. So I had my own private finances, but then like the household finances yeah. and the business that we were running together, those finances, you were in charge of them. And I feel like I was responding to a desire to be taken care of. Like I was, oh, yeah. I was wishing and hoping. So my father never touched finances, never. So we are deep in my daddy issues there. <laughs> and I, I think I just, I just plastered on you the idea that of course you can handle this. You're a grown up. Um, you're good at math. Like that should as have something to do with it. To money. As though your ability to do differential calculus has something to do with bookkeeping, How accounting, and budgeting. How much should we put on the budgeting? credit card this money uh, this month? Well, um, let me get out my my calculus. Okay. And we'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll figure this out. <laughs> and, but I think that is what I was responding to, um, unconsciously, obviously. But it was leaving me. Um, well, I didn't, I stopped knowing how to talk about money at all for years. Yeah. It would cause me such panic that I would, I would have full blown panic attacks, the kind that leave you, um, panting on the floor of the bathroom when the subject of money would come up, um, for a couple of years. And I had some, some two o'clock in the morning wake ups where I would be panicked and not know what to do about it and not say anything to you. And, and yeah, we, so I had all my own. We first discovered that troubles. there was a problem when I realized that I, I wanted to stop running. The, the business that we were running together was a gym and it required my physical presence every day for somewhere between 11 and 14 hours. Um, and I didn't want to do that anymore. I was homeschooling our children at the same time. So I would homeschool them in the gym space. We had these nice offices, but in that space during the day, and I'd be working in the morning and working in the middle of the day and working at the end of the day and then homeschooling, I was exhausted. And I just decided I wanted to do something else. Yeah. And I said to you, like, so I, I need to get out. And the gym was losing us money every single month. Yep. There was this lack of clarity, like, wait, we, we're not actually accomplishing our goals. We're just getting into debt. And I think in retrospect, so we had created a thing that we loved in so far as the people. Yep. We met some amazing human beings running that place. I I love them. Wasn't actually counting on that when we started. No. It. I thought it was just going to be thought a money be thing, a in which case thing. it might have been simpler to look at. But that's not why it was no. complicated. Uh, but it was there. They were. They were. They awesome. were amazing. They still are. They're amazing people. Um, but the but the finances just didn't work. Yeah. We did not make the strategic decisions, and we were dealt a few difficult blows with a bridge closing nearby that made the traffic pattern yeah, not work, and right. then a competitor coming and moving in just a mile and a half away and luring customers away. Hard decisions that needed to be made from that place. Um, would have been better if we could talk about money in a uh, value neutral way. Right. Yeah. But we hadn't gotten there. And one of the reasons was that we were both hiding some of what we needed. Yeah. But we did eventually have the conversation, or at least I did, where I said, okay, we're, we're done. I'm not going to run that place. If you want to keep it going, go right ahead. But I'm done. I'm going back to grad school. See ya. <laughs> And I applied to grad school and you had to figure out what you were going to do. And it took you another couple months to realize, oh, I don't want to do this alone. Yep. Which was the information you needed and you made that decision. But that wasn't actually the the critical piece, if you ask me, about dealing with money in our household. No. Because no. money was still a huge problem. It took us point. a while after that. And it wasn't until the moment the moment in the airport. Oh, God. So money is difficult to talk about for some of us. Okay, for a lot of us. And often what happens it, with something that's difficult to talk about is you get to a spot where you're exposed. Yep. You're exposed and you can no longer hide the from thing the that, truth. The thing that you don't want to talk about is almost certainly not going to just go away. Right. It's going to pop up somehow and be... So it turned out you had been hiding some things around money. How how 
how close to the edge we always were. How close to the were. edge we were and how, how over the edge How we very were pay, lose, paycheck to paycheck money. and losing money and over the edge we were. And I was, um, I was a, a couple years into grad school at that point in a, in a process that we knew was going to take five to six years. And my brother was dying and um, living with us. And he was having what we had hoped was going to be life-saving surgery while we were away in California. And it turned out instead to be quite the opposite of life-saving. It was, um, it was, uh, it's when we found out that he was really inoperable. And we were trying, to, we were trying to race back across the country to get to him, to talk to him. And our flights were canceled. There was like this huge problem. We needed to change our flights so we could get to where he was in Boston. And then and we it, went to rent a car. And we went to rent a car and all of the credit cards failed. And I had no idea. It was, I'm sure this is an embarrassing moment. I'm oh, sure this brings up huge embarrassment. It, it is embarrassing. It It's an embarrassing story. I see the look on your face. Part of, and also, but we have since. I'm so grateful for that moment. through so much. I mean, we... We couldn't talk about anything. No, at it wasn't all complicated just you. I would choke money. up, right, and, and cry. Both of like, us, I, my eyes would well up, and I just couldn't get out the words I needed to. And the worst part of that moment was, so I didn't keep any credit cards at the time, but I had been saving money, and I had a yeah. few thousand dollars yep. saved, but no access to it because I'd put it in savings accounts and and long term accounts, so no access to it in the middle of an airport. Yeah. So there was nothing to do, but I could have helped. Yeah. And but because I didn't tell because, you, I, and because I didn't we weren't give talking you the about picture. it, I didn't ask questions. Yeah. yeah, we let that cause really like what what turned into a traumatic experience, you know, overnight and trying to figure things out and calling people in the middle of the night, and it was just awful. yeah. And this was also one o'clock in the morning. It was one o'clock in, in the morning, Boston, trying to get to to Dana Farber. Yeah. It, I mean, it was just, it was, it was a low spot with a low spot. And then when we got to the bottom of the low spot, we dug a hole yeah. and then we both got in it and then didn't talk to each other. <laughs> yeah. But I am grateful for that moment because it, it became obvious that what we were doing wasn't, wasn't working. working. And that was, that was it. That was the decision point. And from there, everything started to change. It did. There was something that we had not utilized. And I, so I teased it as a secret weapon, yeah. um, in the, at the end of the last episode, really, it was just noticing that we weren't using our strengths, yep. that the, the, <laughs> the secret weapon was just me. I know how to manage money yeah. and I have a particular quality that you do not. I have, um, a very quick discernment yep. capacity and the ability to set pretty strong boundaries without it causing me as much trouble as you have. Right. So that would have been a great role for me. Yeah. But because I so desperately wanted to imagine that you were a slightly different yeah. person. Yeah, your imagination of who. We forgot to lean into your uh, strengths, which is troubleshooting and seeing massive possibility and the ability to accept um, punches over and over again and then get up or like roll right back up, you know, your judo qualities. And the, those, and all those, of those things. And those two things, the ability to, to handle um a hit and keep going <laughs> and to imagine great possibilities don't actually produce good money management <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't turn out to be no at least you, i didn't it didn't work and and leaving aside the judgment of my money management skills yours were better and our and, system was very complicated we were trying to keep a household for seven yep. kids we were we were still we were trying to manage my brother's illness, which was costing uh, quite a bit in in just handling the the copays and all of that. He obviously couldn't work, and it was a lot. It yep. was just a lot, and it needed a someone who would see the full complexity, accept that it was that complex, and address and make decisions around those issues along the way. You are fantastic at that. And I didn't and, know to lean on that myself, but I had before. Before right. we were together, I yep. knew that. It's why my parents trusted me to take care of their finances. My mother's um, manic depression had manifested in quite a lot of of trouble with their 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 money situation. Um, 
that she didn't know how to manage. And my father was afraid to manage. And I, so I had learned from that. I'd learned how to use my discernment yeah. well, but I, some, I wanted to believe something about you so yeah. much so that I, yeah, I, I neglected to actually use my strengths. Yeah. And, um, I was, I desperately wanted to be that particular thing for you. Yeah. And so you made a I, mirage. I made a mirage. I wouldn't let you see the things that were, I wouldn't let you see the parts that it, that it wasn't working, that I wasn't that person. And so I just shoved them aside and, and, and we already had this, this, our, our complex is making it difficult for us to talk about it just to begin with. Right. And then, things that are hard to talk about can easily turn into what seem to be utterly unmanageable, ununtangleable <laughs> yep. situations. And what we realized in that, that moment in the airport always sticks with me because when I think that things are unmanageable, like that's it, like we're at the end of the road, this can't be handled. That was not actually the truth. The truth was what we needed was to talk about what was going on, make some different decisions, make some very difficult decisions, and then go through. I mean, it took years then to dig it out did. of the yeah. death spots we were in and to try to figure out a better way to to go about uh, managing our lives and actually living the way we wanted to. And that that moment when that embarrassing and infuriating moment, you know, infuriating from the fury point of view, not <laughs> from the uh, just sort of entertaining annoyed it was it was bad it was a really bad moment at a really bad time and the result of it was that it helped blow apart the the tangle that our complexes had created that kept us from talking about money yeah it was not just a spotlight but an actual like an incendiary device yep. it was an explosion yeah and we had to in order to put anything back together i mean well for one thing we had to get out of logan airport we had to because that's yeah <laughs> so we had to figure out like okay what are we doing what's happening it was bitter cold it was february oh, it was man, like it was so cold it was like four degrees out yeah. fahrenheit it was it We're was walking around rough. the slushy streets of yeah. um, at three o'clock in the morning yeah. what how do you feel now about how we handle money conversations oh uh, it completely different uh i feel I, I still because I sometimes still see your eyes well up. I see you, you know. My complex says. I mean, I see it now. <laughs> pop up. Oh, it's a pretty embarrassing moment. Wow, um, uh, I no longer feel the fear, discomfort. I'm not sure what it was that kept me from from just coming to you and saying this is this is a bad thing that's happening right now. Yeah. This isn't working. Uh, I don't feel that anymore. I still have some strange habits, like not just putting the bills on your desk. Yeah, we've uh, still noticed that there are some things that come up. Like you'll you'll put you'll you'll put a bill away rather than give it to me directly, or yeah. you'll you'll like use the wrong credit card. Like we we have them. Yep. It's all very clear what you can use each credit card for, so that it works into the system I have set yep. up. You'll use the wrong one. So there's still something reaching there's, up and, and yep. poking at you. So, but you asked how I felt and I generally feel comfortable saying, Hey, here's a bill. Yeah. Cause that was one of the things I didn't want to show you all the bills Yeah. cause they didn't work. <laughs> and I, I wanted you to think I was taking care of things. I mean, it's so childish, but you were doing an enormous job. So you were, you were earning the, the money for the household while the, gym was open then you were earning the money for the household while i was so i was working at the gym but it didn't it didn't make Wasn't enough money to pay money. Yeah. a salary for me yeah. and um you were then earning the money for the household while i was in school it's been you have been taking on so much responsibility that i can imagine that working that hard putting in your all and yet it's still not working. Well, it must have been, well, just frustrating. It, yeah, it was frustrating. It felt like failure. 
and like, but it felt like a failure that I could somehow pull out, like turn it around and, and make it work eventually. And if I could just hide how much it was failing until I was succeeding, then it would look like I was succeeding the whole time. Something stupid like that. And, um, but the truth is that to get to this spot where now things are a little bit more settled down, we still have, we now have college age children. Okay. So there's <laughs> so, another issue. There's other issues. But now everything's out on the table. So That's like, it. Right. Yeah. So it's, it doesn't actually matter what the state of our finances well, are right now. What, what matters was, to me is that we talk about it. Yeah, that's openly. what I was going to say. Nothing changed about our financial situation after that explosion. It's not like I suddenly started making more money. It's not like you suddenly started bring, making more money. The bills didn't change. What changed was we were able to talk about it. Right. And you being better at managing complex systems like our finances took it over and started to find ways to make it work better. Right. And it doesn't cause me the same kind of stress it causes you. I actually enjoy that puzzle. I enjoy the that the kind of math, the bookkeeping math that it is. I enjoy the the strategizing around right. it. Yeah. Um, because it is. It's running our household is a lot like running a business. Um, there are strategic investments and then then there are foolish ones. <laughs> um so it it to lean into my strengths there actually makes me feel good and I'm efficient at it. It doesn't take me a zillion hours. Yeah. I have a specific rhythm. I have a pattern that I follow and I know how to make it work so that when things happen um, that throw us off course, you know, so dad passed away and there was just like, okay, there's all the costs for the funeral and all the things I, it was able to just be handled. I could handle that all. Yeah. And it didn't actually throw me off course. I, I wasn't able to sit down in my system for a couple of weeks because there was just too much going on and it was fine because I had handled the system and I could easily say to you, don't worry. It's, yeah. it's fine. Like we have, we've built and into the system, <laughs> right? Cause what I'm talking about is actually yeah. Just being able to count on the system working, the, the like right. the the system that I had set up working, and it has taken a very tender and painful issue and turned it into one that is a little bit more neutral. Yeah, and I think that's why I approach it like a business. So I've I've started a lot of businesses in my life. Some have made plenty of money. Some have made no money. Some have been entirely philanthropic. Some have been an adventure in the up and down of loss and win. Oh, some of them have been really, really. Some of them I've closed um, right when they were. <laughs> I have had a bit of a, a reputation for being a, a, a great starter. And then I don't want to keep going. So I, I leave right as they're getting traction. But, but there's something sort of neutral about money in that sense. Like, well, it's an investment in this thing. Do I want to yeah. keep doing this thing? But our household and our life, well, that's different. There's, there's right, there's there's all this emotional that, weight that has say, to be tied weight, exactly. to it. Where I don't have to do that with a business. I can divest my emotions from that if I if I choose to. I can we've, write it all down and, and set it aside. But, but we've never had the conversation with the kids where it's like, okay, so financially speaking, no birthdays this year. <laughs> That is that is an emotional weight. Right. That, There's we an don't emotional do it weight. That way. Right. Which doesn't mean we haven't had to make very hard decisions about what birthdays look like. Yep. And we, we, we have. have had those conversations with the right. kids. But it's not like you can just erase the fact that there are all these people, there are people counting on us. Yep. And we're counting on each other. And we're in a spot in our life now where there's no one to ask for help. Yeah. There's just there's us. There's us. And that is um rattling it's it's definitely that that's the thing that comes up for me thinking about money right now not that not that we've had zillions of people you know to to go to before but the fact that we it's are we are the old folks for our family yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are the um we are where the buck stops one of the things that does for me is remind me that we're a team no matter how we decide to to run our relationship we're a team we yeah. haven't been getting along that great the last couple of days we've been we've been we banging up each other's feelings and, and they ha those issues have largely been around not acting like a team not acting like a team gets um, in the way right forget it and forgetting that the holidays cause us stress yeah. and it tends to we we subtleize it what that's not a word i like to make up words 
we 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 try to pretend like the stress is subtle and yeah. can just be like no 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 it, it's holiday stress but it's over there it's yeah no true. it isn't it's right there it's biting us in the ass it's energizing right the complexes which then come up and inspire action that later I'm like it causes even what more trouble happened? why why did I do that that's not in line with any of my goals right. there's a complex so when it comes to money for me the the most important thing is that we are having honest conversations about it and that we're setting goals that align with our values which means we actually have to know our own personal values and our yeah. values are a little bit different we have we have a slightly different yep. value set each of us and it's making me think about the fact that we could probably use like a revisit yeah of that that's a good idea so yeah let's let's do look that at our, look at our we're gonna talk and... next about um when things fall apart and that would also be a good time to to check in on values so yeah i yeah. invite everybody to do a values check for yourself and see uh get that sort of i, I think a values check means just like really literally look at a list of values go down it and literally check off which ones are top for you yeah. and, and here, then stick it aside but it, because it can be really valuable when we're coming up against these sensitive topics yeah and the holidays are a time and we've said so many time of expectations and those expectations can kind of obscure right our values because sometimes yeah and you end up doing things out of expectation that you don't want yeah they're not even in alignment with yeah. your values or and the the holiday season can be a lot less stressful if if i focus on my values as i'm as i'm walking through my day and doing things like is this is this in line with my values well what are my values yeah. so one of my top values is candor so what i can thank you for in this is i know that this subject is uh, hard doesn't cover it i know this is really hard for you but i also know that just sharing the story. This isn't a thing guys do. Guys don't share where they flub things like money uh, or sex. And I, I right? flub money and sex quite often. But being willing to share seems to me like one of the most important pieces of unraveling whatever this nonsense is that, that we I have agree. around what what a what a guy is supposed to be and how he's supposed to act. Speaking of expectations, yeah. So I, I appreciate well, that. Well, thank you. And I do, it feels like something that, so you're, you're comfortable talking about sex. Like you're, you don't even see why it's uncomfortable. That's so true. you do it. It's easy. And although this hasn't always been true, I am now comfortable talking about my failures because I've seen how much good has come of talking about them. It's amazing what changes I've been able to make by owning my failures. Yeah. And I appreciate so. it because it's it's taken our relationship out of this persona to persona, the mask. Yeah. We're not just two masks interacting with each other. We're two whole people interacting with each other. Right. And screwing up. Which is messy. Plenty. And mm -hmm. it's messy. And and in that mess is deeper connection. Yeah. So I'm grateful. Thank you. So thanks everybody for listening to our mess for a while. We'll yeah. see you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we'd be so happy if you could drop a rating and a quick review so more people will be able to find us. In episode 11, we talked about how sticky and tangled money conversations have been for us. We remembered how hard it's been to overcome the taboo of talking about money and how so, so much trouble it caused when we tried to pretend that everything was okay when it wasn't. Finding a way to say what needed to be said took a horrible, stressful moment stranded in an, air in an airport. And if I were to change one thing, it would be to go back and say, you don't have to wait for a life and death emergency, just say it. From the moment we decided to have courageous, exposing conversations about money, we've been able to act as a team to solve life's practical problems. The holidays, especially a holiday in a pandemic with the economy crashing all around us, only make the need for compassionate teamwork even bigger asset for our relationships. 
Join us next time when Ken and I will talk about what to do when things fall apart. Relationships don't always end, or continue, the way we'd hoped. Endings can feel like failures, especially in a culture that praises longevity of love without any exploration into the quality of the relationship. This is a topic that gets me pretty fired up, so I'll be good to go. So until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.